What, what, what has housing been like for you? After 20 years of living on the streets and now housed, I know, I know it was a little bit of a struggle at first. Living on the street, if you don't have a functioning, if you don't have your facilities functioning in your RV, um, you've got about a two minute window, right? Especially if you get sick like, like I have been. Sure. So you're dealing with that constantly. Um, you start accepting things as being normal that are far from the normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking to the police literally every single day. Right. That is not normal. I had, I had accepted that as normal. Mm -hmm. And I had gone to uh, Oregon, you know, to see my son up there. And when I got up there, I started to realize because it was no longer happening to me up there. They're probably happening to everybody now, but, and so that's one thing. And then, and, and then another thing is um, hygiene, you know, especially if you're, you're, you take an add addiction, add meth into that mm -hmm. equation, pretty soon your quality of life starts to just slip, sure. right? You may not only bathe once a month, yeah. if even that. And uh, you start accepting that as the norm, and it's not. And, and would you can would you think? Because I know for me, part of my um, when I got when I first got clean and sober, I didn't realize how I wasn't just addicted to the meth, but I was also addicted to the drama. Oh, oh, oh! The drama, the, the drama becomes a normal too, doesn't it? Another thing that really ha does happen to you is that you know you may spend a lot of time in the driver's seat. Not driving, just passing time. Well, we get addicted to the movement around us, seeing everything, the cars, the life, every, all of it. We get addicted to it. Sure. And you go inside those walls and you got an adjustment period. Right. So would you say the first couple of months when you and Jamie went inside, it was kind of... Oh, yeah, it was quite bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, it was really interesting. The first person we got housed uh, about five or six years ago, um, they lived underneath uh, 101, right there by Sports Basement. It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was Toys R Us at the time. But when we got that person housed, he he said to uh, myself and the and the Life Moves caseworker at the time, he says that it's it's too quiet. He had gotten so used to hearing the thump of the cars go across that you know where the mm -hmm. there's a skip between the asphalt and mm -hmm. the concrete, and he had a did it did it did it. He had gotten so used to that that humming sound. That when he went into his apartment, he got scared at night because it was just so quiet. And yeah. Didn't know what to do. So mm -hmm. he actually uh, spent the night out underneath that overpass a couple nights a week and then a couple nights in the apartment until he could get used to the wow. quietness, which, um, hey, everybody's different. Everybody's got to figure out how to adjust. But I, I, you know, I guess from my, my perspective, I guess, you know, and I guess this is something that other people might think of. I, as soon as you get housing, you think, "Oh my gosh, let me just run into housing. I, I I can't wait, right?" But then, but you gotta remember, it's 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 such a change, right? It's, mm. it's a scary change because it's something all new. I mean, you got plumbing. You know, you talk about taking a shower once a month. Now you got a shower. You can take a shower anytime you want. Uh, the cooking, right? Cooking. I had I had adjusted to not eating, and I've got this cancer. This, and you know, I'm malnutrition, mm -hmm. but I'm. I'm not getting the food, right? Yeah. So I had done that. I had, I had disciplined myself as being a house mover, be, being able to work long hours with little food. Yeah. And man, after years of it, it, pretty soon, it's normal to me, but not to anybody else. Right. Right. right? Well, it's, it's it's funny you said that. So I spent twenty something years as a truck driver, and uh, I used to always get up at three thirty, four o'clock in the morning to go to work and mm -hmm. start working like five thirty, six o'clock every day. And I did that for so long that even today I, I'm, I, I, my body, I, I'm awake at four thirty with no alarm, no matter what. It's mm -hmm. just kind of in my, in my, it actually today it works for my benefit because I get up early. I have time with God and, and I do, I have a little workout in my house. So I work out and stuff like that. So it works, it works in my favor now, but when I first got sober and, and I didn't know how to, it was hard for me. I didn't know how to adjust. I also <laughs> spent a lot of times in my addiction where I was spending all night up and then sleeping. Three or four days later, I would spend 
sleep for 12 hours or 14 hours straight and then I'd wake up and get high right away. But hey, you know, that's another, another story. For yeah, me. well, I did that for 30 years, you know, so. Yeah. There's no more. It's, uh, um, I've been really blessed and I'm, I'm really thankful to God. I'm thankful that he's right there for me and always. And uh, I ignore him, you know, when I'm in, a, in my addiction, I ignore um, some people. I, I like to call the little bird that, that lives on my shoulder. Sure, yeah. You know, and but, you know, I'm really happy right at this moment in time and that um, I'm building my relationship back up. Would you say? God. Would you say this is probably the most peaceful time that you've ever had in your life? Absolutely, absolutely. I I worry about you know when this happens that when I go clean, I always worry about tomorrow. I always worry about the next hour. Yeah. It's not day to day for me. It's minute to minute. Yeah. But I have so much vivid before me truth. I know so much truth that I don't want to. It is in my heart that I'm to be on the right path. It is in my heart to show who I am, to be who I am. Right. Not not this screwed up crap that I have experienced. I'm I'm grateful, you know, I wouldn't go back. Yeah. But but now every minute has to count now. Sure. sure. I don't have the slack to play anymore. To, right. 